is Astoria C and my name is Toyo A. Phillips. Welcome to Astoria C's. My name is Toyo C. Phillips. Astoria C's is a talk show that addresses a variety of social issues, from the serious to the amusing, the sad, and even the controversial. My guests and I will speak on these issues and share candid experiences that have shaped how we see things. Now it's time for me to introduce my guest of the day and I'm excited about her. She's the award-winning, talented and gorgeous Beverly Naya. Hey Bev. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Don't every day one man meet somebody like you. Eh? <laughs> Detective, are you not scared of losing your job? I mean, I can lose everything as long as I have you. No, <laughs> Detective, wait. Why are you shaking like a teenager now? A teenager on his first date. What is it? You know what? Just wait for me. I have a little surprise for you. A little background on Ben. She's, um, she's been referred to as one of Nollywood's fastest rising actresses. He's <laughs> gone from the bottom to being an A-lister in a short time. Now, I have a problem with that. Like, you never know how much effort and work people have put into their craft. Exactly. You just think the person just came and just blew. No, so I, I, I but I'm digressing. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, Bev's name came up in conversation a few weeks ago, actually. And my friend, a girl, said, and I quote, anytime I see that girl, all I see is a sex symbol. And I pondered on it for days. I was mm -hmm. like, is there any serious minded woman who would want to be seen as only just a sex symbol? And I thought to ask you, is that, is that accurate? Like, would any serious minded woman want to be seen as just a sex symbol? Um, I don't even know how to even answer that question. Um, firstly, like, there's, I mean, when I, I don't really, I, I've learned not to take what people say to heart as much as I used to. Like, before I used to get offended where, when I would hear certain things and stuff like that. But you have to consider the fact that you don't know the state of mind of the person True. at the time that they're saying it. You don't know the reason why they've chosen to use the words they've used. And you don't necessarily know if those are her actual opinions or that's what she wants to say because it makes her feel better about herself. All right. I'm just taking that into consideration. But then, um, I digress. <laughs> the point is, um, if people see me as a sex symbol, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with um, being desirable, but then I respect people who are able to see beyond that, you know? Um, and I mean, I think it's been a very long time, I mean, where, whereby people have just seen me as only that, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to me. Um, I tend to, I'd love to inspire people. That's, be, that's become obvious with my Fifty Shades of Black, Black campaign. Yeah. Um, I, I mentor as well. Um, I, I mean, I act in films. I'm on tinsel. I do films. I mean, one of, I mean, I'm in some of the best films in Nigeria. So, mm -hmm. outside of being seen as desirable, there is actually a craft and a brand behind it. Yeah. Okay. So, is it? Would it be like very serious to you to prove someone like that wrong? No, not at all. Your opinions of me is none of my business. Right. <laughs> Sorry, like, that's basically how I feel. I mean, I don't go out there objectifying myself in any way. Like, the way I dress, yeah. you don't see anything yeah. sexual here. But so. there's some risque pictures of you. I've seen, I've seen pictures of you in, and not to put you on the spot, because everyone owns their body, everyone knows, mm -hmm. everyone, it's, it's, your, it's your life. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's what you choose to do. But can you see how someone would see pictures of you in like a bikini or in a, cause you have a good, a beautiful body by the way. So can you see how people will see pictures of you and think this girl is, this is what she's selling and nothing more? No, I don't see it, totally I'm afraid. You don't? No. So have I'm you even ever... surprised because like, I haven't even had a conversation like this in, in years, to be mm. honest. So to be sitting here and- In 2017. <laughs> 2017 and okay. having this conversation of, being seen as a sex symbol is like, no. Yes, and? Yeah, I can understand um, the idea of um, men having a crush on me, but to say that um, at this point in my career that I'm seen as a sex symbol, I think, I don't think so. So I, I personally don't think there's anything being wrong with being seen as a sex symbol. Mm -hmm. So far there's more to exactly. it. Yeah. So there has to be more mm -hmm. to it. Like don't just see me as a sex symbol, see mm -hmm. me as something else. Um, I, I've never felt the need to prove otherwise. Like I think 
like I said, I do, I do, I am aware of the fact that there are um, men out there that, you know, find me desirable and stuff like that. But I've never worried about being seen as a sex symbol because there's just so much more to me. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't help it if, <laughs> yeah. if people find me sexy. I mean, I don't know how to change that, I'm afraid. I don't go out there um, choosing to wear certain things because I want to be objectified. Yeah. I don't. Okay, so the reason why I actually brought you here is because I've spoken to you, I know you, I know that you are definitely more than just a sex symbol. And um, it's, it's, it's funny that people still think like that, but that's the reality of the society. I know it's 2017 and, and yeah, people think things should have changed and people should be more enlightened, but there's still a lot of ignorance and there's still a lot of... Um, when you mix a character with the, with the person, then yeah, that's definitely very exactly. Ignorant. Okay, fine. Rosie and the re wedding party was sexy. Okay, fine. Um, make a move it was a relatively. Come on, guys. Get real <laughs> it. I just find it really annoying because I mean, I just I don't know. I just can't be bothered to get into it. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like the ignorance is coming from people watching you in a, in a particular so let's playing you, a role. Let's be exactly, so let's playing you. a role in a character. And let's talk about wedding party because that was a mm -hmm. huge movie. A lot of people mm -hmm. saw that, and a lot of people saw the character you played. So mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if that's what has confused or has sort of um, sipped its way into the consciousness of the person that spoke. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. But now you're saying obviously the character you play is different from who you really are. Yeah, of exactly. So wait. Who is Beverly Naya? If you were to describe yourself, how um, would you describe yourself? I would say that, um, how would I describe myself? Young, ambitious, um, <laughs> happy person. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I've, I mean, like in what in what regard? Like my career or your just... Your career, your your personality? Okay, maybe? well, I'm named Beverly Naya. Grew up in London, live in Nigeria today. Um, I'm an actress, studied filmmaking. Um, and script writing, not using my degrees, <laughs> but I will. Uh, yeah, soon. so you yeah. also studied sociology and psychology. I, I studied sociology and so, um, psychology, and I, 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 um, I loved it, but I just wanted to try something else, you know. So that's how I fell in. Uh, that's how I fell into acting, okay. and then went in, went to university and studied filmmaking. Okay, so we have to go on a short break now. But when yeah. we get back, we'll be talking about your Fifty Shades of Black mm -hmm. campaign. Don't okay. go anywhere. We'll be right back. Coming up on Astoria Seeds. And it's not because I had issues with my complexion, no. It's because um, I just saw that there was a lot going on in our society and I thought, I felt like if I used myself as an example, that hopefully I can inspire other girls in the process. Take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Astoria Seas. I'm speaking with actress Beverly Naya, and we're about to talk about your Fifty Shades of Black campaign. How mm -hmm. did that come about? Um, Fifty Shades of Black started in 2014. How did it start? I just basically woke up one morning and I felt like I, I just needed to inspire girls. You know, I wanted to put myself in a position where I could just inspire and encourage young black girls to just love themselves. Um, you know, from so what's within. The, what's the campaign about? So basically, it's just um, it deals with colorism. It deals with you know just um, loving, embracing all complexions. You know, dark skin, light skin, brown skin, <laughs> albino, all forms of um, all shades of black. Um, and it's just basically an avenue to get girls to see themselves as beautiful. You know, whether no matter their complexion, because all black is beautiful. So that's really how it started. And it's not because I had issues with my complexion, no. It's because um, I just saw that there was a lot going on in our society and I thought, I felt like if I used myself as an example, that hopefully I can inspire other girls in the process. Right, what, so, was, yeah. the, what, what was the response to that? How it was, was it huge. I mean, I was very surprised. I, I was very surprised by the re um, response. It was huge. Like, um, Dark and Lovely got on board, so oh, they nice. became, yeah, I was, started, I was partnering with them at, at a point. And um, yeah, um, a lot of celebrities got on board and collaborated with me also to ensure that we made this a movement. And yeah, it was big. I haven't stopped. We're working on something else. I can't, I mean, this year, 
I can't I think I heard this. something. I think Maybe. a little bird whispered. You're doing Maybe. something, a documentary? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about young um, women empowerment. So what role can society play in empowering young girls, building their self-confidence? I think um, definitely being more self-aware, uh, just ensuring that you build your confidence um, so that you can inspire young girls. It's, we, there's young girls that are looking up to the older ones and if they don't seem confident in themselves, if they don't seem to love themselves, um, if they project, project self-loathing all the time, then these younger ones see that and they grow up thinking that that's acceptable. So I think it begins with us. We, think we need to love ourselves a bit more and ensure that we're doing um, what's necessary to not only protect ourselves but to protect the ones that come, come after, yeah, us. after us. And I feel like a lot of is being done for young girls, like mm -hmm. we address a lot of issues about young girls and self-confidence and mm -hmm. this, but no one is really talking to the young boys. So mm -hmm. they don't know how to act and they don't know how to treat a woman right. So mm -hmm. what should we be teaching the young boys, in your opinion? In my opinion, just teach them how to be gentlemen, you know? Teach them how to respect a woman and see her as a queen rather than an object or just a plaything. Just teach them how to respect women and how to honor a, a woman. Or I know you're supposed to honor your husband, but I think yeah, the husband, a man should honor his wife or his girl, well, whoever he's with <laughs> <laughs> as well. Um, I think that's very important. Respect is reciprocal, you know, um, that's how I feel. Coming up on Astoria Seas. <laughs> Not like that, but I just heard so many horror stories yeah. and stuff. So I think that was just a strategy that I had to protect um, myself and I mean, what, what ended up happening was that a lot of these producers and directors became really good friends with my mum. Take a break, I'll be right back. Welcome back to Astoria Seas. I'm speaking with Beverly Naya. So how do you feel about being referred to as one of Nollywood's It Girls? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. What does that mean? Like you're one of the A-listers. You're the top oh, of the Nollywood chain. I mean, chain. that's a nice feeling. I can't complain about that. Yeah, but do you think you're where you, you'd always dreamt to be? Never. Not no. even close. Not even... 10%, not even, yeah, I don't think I am. Okay, maybe 20%. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just very ambitious. So um, um, I'm very ambitious. So I know that I'm not even close to where um, I want to be. But I have no doubt about the fact that I'm going to get there. Yeah, I'm actually excited for Nollywood because I'm yeah. seeing better scripts now. Like yeah, usually yeah. the stories used to be very similar. It used to be all the mama and papa script, but mm -hmm. things have changed now. Mm -hmm. But for you, what has been the most challenging role you've taken on? Most challenging role... Uh, I would say Judy Dada's new project. Okay. Um, there's no title yet. I'm still <laughs> trying to work it out. But yeah. then, yeah, I would say that one because it, it just took me to somewhere that I haven't been, I haven't gone in a long time. Like, I mean, since I moved to Nigeria, like you said, there's been a lot of the whole mummy, daddy type of roles, yeah. daughter, wife, husband. Someone killing someone, someone uh, cheating. Like, you know, and there's... You, sometimes there's only one way you can play those type of characters because of the way the scripts, the script is written and stuff like that. But thankfully, that is changing, and now we're receiving. More, I'm receiving more challenging scripts and stuff. And the reason why I said Jude's film is because um, the, the 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 script was just phenomenal to read. It was such an engaging script, and um, I loved the characters. Each and every character was just challenging in different ways, and I particularly loved my character because. It was just so, the person was so far away from who I am and what was required of her is um, something that I've nev I never thought I'd even do in Nigeria. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, now I can't wait for the movie to come out. Yeah. But um, what do you think about, before I ask that, what do you consider before taking on a role? Like when you see the script, or how does it even work? They call your agent, yeah. your people call their people, their people call I, their people. How does it work? For me, I, um, they call me. Most times they call me directly. Um, I read the script. If I like the script, then I pass the conversation on to my manager. So then they have that conversation and then 
they give me the information and then we take it from there. If it works for me, it, fine. If it doesn't work for me, then we move on. So you just said something about your management, your manager. I know at some point your mom was your manager. Is she still your manager? That's the thing, like a lot of, I'm okay. I'm okay with it anyway. When I joined the industry, it was a strategy of mine. Um, my mum and I decided that to avoid any wahala, I'll just call her my manager for the longest, which is what I did. She was never really my manager. It was just to protect me from Nollywood. <laughs> no, not, not like that, but I just heard so many horror stories yeah. and stuff. So I think that was just a strategy that I had to protect um, myself. And I mean, what, what ended up happening was that a lot of these producers and directors became really good friends with my mum. So it just made my life a whole lot easier. Oh, that's yeah. nice. And okay, you also said um, you're not where you want to be. You said 20%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like seeing you here in Nollywood, you are huge. Like you're a yeah. producer's dream if I may say so. What, what, what's the end goal for you? What do you see yourself? Uh, do you know what, I'm just learning, I only learned contentment late last year. Do you understand? Because I have this, I have the ability to like, be, like be happy with, no, I have, the, I have this thing where like, okay, fine, I've achieved this and I can forget what I've achieved in two minutes. That's, it's a very, very terrible habit. And I only started working on that like late last year. And now I, I understand what contentment is and I'm so happy with life for that reason because now that I understand contentment, I am actually proud of my achievements and stuff. But that's, <laughs> that doesn't go without saying that where I see myself, I see myself just doing amazing things. By that I mean, by things rather. By that I mean going into production, okay. um, inspiring more people, being renowned, not just in Nigeria, but just beyond Nigeria. Hollywood, Africa, baby, all the way. Around the world, exactly. Like, <laughs> I, just, I just see so much more. Um, I, just, I just refuse to restrict myself to just one nation. So there's something that's not peculiar to Nigeria, to mm -hmm. Nollywood, and it's typecasting. Mm -hmm. So the black woman in Hollywood movies is almost always the help or the the criminal, the, the black woman. guy, exactly, the yeah. angry woman. Yeah. The black guy is always the, the bad guy, yeah. all of that. Yeah. What do you think about typecasting? I, I really can't stand it, to be honest. Um, I think it's annoying because I think there's just so much more to an actor than just one specific character. Now, um, yes, yeah, so I don't really, I'm not really, obviously I don't think there's any actor that's full typecasting, but I do just appreciate directors who are like, who see an actor and they believe that there's more to that actor and then they say, okay, I'm gonna challenge you this time, which is what Judy Dada did, which is one okay, example. Okay, you keep talking of, about no, Judy, no, I need example. to see, I, I need to say see one that example movie. of a few who have done that, who have said, okay, Beverly, I know there's more to do this, you know? I appreciate directors like that because um, they just allow you to be an actor rather than just this person that they feel fits this mold. Well, you know how they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Mm. Like Morgan Freeman will always be like the voice of God. I agree. Of. And also like Angelina Jolie at one point was known for as the sexy actress who was great with um, seductress roles and blah, 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 until she challenged herself and she did Changeling and her career changed wow. forever. And then she, she stopped being just a sex symbol and became <laughs> something greater than just that. So yeah. Okay, okay. We have to go on a break now. When we come back, I'll be back with my final thoughts. Stay tuned. We're taking a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Astoyo Seas, and it will not be Astoyo Seas if you don't know what Toyo is seeing. So, women are more than sex objects, guys. Like, this is 2017, women are doing a lot. A woman was almost President of the United States, there's a German Chancellor who's a woman, there's a British Prime Minister who's a woman, so there's more to women than just the sex symbol. And I feel like women need to empower each other and lift each other up. That this statement came from a woman, the whole all I see is a sex symbol statement is not really a good testament, but it is a good, um, what's it called now? It's a good, it shows what, what's going on with women. Like we, we, we really need to support each other more. We need to speak good and speak kindly of each other more. And to the young girls out there who feel like they need to sell their bodies or who feel like they need to be like vixens and be sexy all the time and all the selfies with your cleavage showing and this and that, there's more to you than that. I have nothing wrong. I have nothing against. 
nothing against that's the word <laughs> thank you i have nothing against girls being sexy and showing their femininity listen we're built like this we can't we should not hide it there's nothing to be hidden this is us but there is more to you than your body so young girls dig deep young guys respect young girls women support each other men be good and be kind to us okay that's as toyo says thank you so much for being on the show beverly thanks for having me and thank you guys for watching you can stay engaged with the show by following us on social media at as toyo sees on twitter and instagram make someone's life better today see you next time bye this is as toyo and my name is Thank you for watching!